Hello everybody, it is the Hebrew Jamaican Cooley and this is part three. This, this is going to be titled just like the Star Wars movie, um, The Jedi Strikes Back. This is going to be The X Strikes Back. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not very funny with those types of jokes. I just try sometimes. All right, so um, where we left off is where I gave her another chance in the relationship, but I openly expected her to actually continue the abuse. This was actually part of my observation. I use it as an opportunity to observe how abusers think, how they speak and how they view you the victim now it was about i think we her birthday was in the summer we had stayed together until about uh let me see let me see let me see let me see we had stayed together we had gotten to about october yes it was around October, right? And we had gotten into an argument. And because this argument had gotten really heated, and I realized she was like clenching her fist as if she wanted to punch me in the mouth. So I looked at her and said to her, say, yo, listen, if you put your hands on me, I'm letting you know right now that I'm going to be leaving. You understand? If you put your hands on me, I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> I'm not going to let it stand. So, she she basically apologized now because she really was thinking about putting her hands on me. And the next day now, she basically started to just like say stuff to me like, um, let's go get married. I'm going to get, we're going to get your papers straightened out. Blah, 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 blah. I want to have your baby, etc., etc., etc. So... You know, September breezes by. We're now in October, November. Yes, it happened in November. And there was a week in particular. She was getting extremely upset. She was like, just, just upset with me. She came home and she was just upset for the entire week. And no matter what I did or could say to her to try and calm her down asking her how her day was asking her if anything that i could if there was anything i could do to make her day any better she it just seems like she turned it out on me she turned everything out on me so eventually tuesday i remember it was a tuesday right in november and she basically started she just like come home one day and start to just like yeah dude why, why would you do something like that so she basically start wailing on me she just comes home opens the door and start wailing on me wailing on me wailing on me wailing on me punching me and stuff like that etc etc right punching on me punching on me punching on me etc so I basically was like, yo, what, what the hell is going on, right? Because we don't talk about this in on you, say so you're going to stop. So she wailing on me, wailing on me. And this time I start to kind of like block the hits, hold her hand, squeeze her hand. This time I'm starting to use, you know, my own physical force to hold her at bay. Last time I didn't do that. This time I'm showing her exactly what could happen to her if I basically start to use my physical energy so I basically like give her a one shove and <laughs> and you know when people like roll over an object and fall on the floor so we were in the bedroom at the time because she started to hit me until we got to the bedroom and then I basically just started holding holding her hands you know, slapping her hands away and stuff like that and then I shoved her over the bed I shoved her, she rolled on the bed, and she rolled off the bed. I don't know if she was being extra dramatic about it, 
but but that's what happened so basically now <clears throat> after that happened now she went into full rage mode and started to swing on me like really and truly swing on me you understand what i'm saying she started to really and truly swing on me so when she started to swing on me now i basically ran out of the house and i ran to the Sheltonham Mall. Um, I went to the Wendy's. I went there. I sat down. And I just started to eat. Because I was just like. I was just like fed up. I went to the Wendy's. And I sat there. And I just ate. And let me tell a lot of truth. I hate Wendy's. I hate Wendy's from Jamaica. And I hate Wendy's here in America. I just hate Wendy's point blank. So the mere fact that I basically went to Wendy's and got something to eat and sat there and collected all my thoughts. It should really tell you what was going on. So in any case, uh, after that now, she calls me asking me where I am and if I'm coming home. I said to her, no, I'm not coming home. And I'm not telling you where I am. But I said, but I am close by though. <laughs> I told her, but I am close by though. You know, she's like, she's like, Kermit Doctor, you take your ass home right now. You take your ass home right now. <laughs> get a look at me and try to tell me when to come on my yard. <laughs> I was like, I was like, woman, and then that's what I said specifically. I said, woman, I will come home when I am good and ready to get my ass whooped. <laughs> because I turn, I, I look, I literally, you know, this is what you have to do at life sometimes, you know. You have to look at your your negative situations and turn it into a positive sometimes. So I literally told her that, woman, I will come home when I'm good and ready for you to beat my ass. You understand? I was like, right now, I don't want to be around you. So when you, when I'm ready for you to come home and have you beat me, I will come home. You understand? So she, so I hung up the phone on her. She called, she called like, yo, there's like 10 missed calls and text messages telling me to take my ass home. And then when she realized that the, the, the aggressiveness was not working with me, she started to go like, babe, please, I feel lonely. Please come home. <laughs> Like, babe, I'm lonely. Please come home. So I'm like, no. I'm, I, I'm like, yo, I'm contemplating if I should actually even come home right now. You know? So this time, um, what I did after she had taken my passport, I had bought a lock safe. It's actually like, um, it's, it's a key safe. And... I put my, 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 my special documents in it. My passport, my birth certificate, things like that. Right? My work permit, things like that. Took it to my cousin's house and told my cousin, say, yo, um, these are my things and blah, blah, blah. Explain what it was and say, yo, put it in a safe place. Right? Not even make your, make your family know. So you have it here for me. You see me? So, my cousin, my cousin took it and he hid it for me. So now my my um documents were in a safe place for her to not be able to take my documents and leave me stranded while you abuse me. So now that because I had that leverage now, I was no longer in fear of certain things happening to me. So I basically just like, you know, chill out. I chilled out for the entire night by Sheltonham Mall. At that time. You could still go inside the mall itself because it's like uh, it was still up and running, even though it was a dying mall. It was still kind of up and running. A lot of people know what I start, uh, what I'm talking about because you still had Bath and Body Works or Bed Bath and Beyond. I, I believe that was in there. So and the Radio Shack too. <laughs> the thing had Radio Shack. So so anyway. <clears throat> so when I came home. I just, when I, I, I turned off my phone eventually because I was sick and tired of her calling and texting. 
right? So after that, I basically came home around like 12 o'clock. I don't remember what time the incident happened, but I remember that I came around around that time. And I came home and I opened the door and this woman was waiting for me with her fist clenched, right? <laughs> with her fist clenched. And I was like, yo, <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with this woman, yo? So she basically, <laughs> yo, this woman. <laughs> so she started wheel on me again. And the reason why I'm laughing is because, you know, it's in the past. You can definitely laugh about things like this. It was a serious situation. It was, and it could have been my life. She could have killed me. But, you know, I can't see see it any other way other than laughing about it and sharing my experience with others so what happened is that now she starts wailing on me wailing on me wailing on me wailing on me and this time my resolve broke again i started to cry again because i, I just started to contemplate my life i was like is this if i mar i said to myself again if I marry this girl, this is going to be my life, like my mother's life. Right? <clears throat> so, when she heard me crying, she started, she started to call me a name. She called me, said, fight back, blah, 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 blah. You big P-U-S-S-Y. You're a wimp. You're this. You're that. Blah, 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 blah. So, eventually, after hearing all of that now, I cracked. I cracked I basically cracked and <clears throat> I, I, I basically just punched her one time when I punched her that one time it's like I don't know that punch just sent her flying right her being shorter than me and much weaker than me too I don't know I don't know or remember if I held back because usually I tend like when when I'm in situations like this I kind of hold back on really using full force on somebody so <clears throat> so basically now like I punched her and she was shocked she was shocked and she looked at me and she's like I can't believe you did that I was like don't put your freaking hands on me anymore you know what I mean? And she was like, I don't know what went into her, but that just made her more, more, like, I don't know what the word, it just made her feel, she just felt like she should do it more. So she started to fight, 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 fight. And I just like, I gave her a one-two. I gave her like, bam, bam. And she fell down again. But she got back up and she started to fight. And this time I realized that if I don't put her down for good. Or if I don't like just beat her down. To make her stop. She's not going to stop. So. I basically just like. We went into it full mode. Where I just dominated the fight after that. You're talking about somebody who's a black belt. Somebody who did gymnastics. Somebody who did track and field for a year. Somebody who did what Americans call soccer for a year. I'm an athlete through and through, especially physically. Right? So, I dominated the fight the whole time when I started to, like, fight back. When I was done, right? When I was done, you know, she was basically, like, on the floor covering up her head. And I stop and I start to yell at her and say, why, why, why did you make me do this? Why don't you leave me alone? Why, why are you so abusive? I was like, I'm not, like I'm telling her, I'm not this type of person. Why are you making me do this? Here's what she got up, right? With a swollen lip and a swollen eye, right? As if nothing happened to her, you know? And she's in pain, you know? So my, my thing is that she was probably drunk again. Because there's no way you could withstand something like that. And still be able to just like 
move around or talk that much. So, so basically now, <clears throat> she says to me, if you had just beaten me, beaten me up in the first place, We wouldn't have to be going through it like this. People, listen to what I just said again. Listen to what I just said again. Right? The woman said to me, my ex said to me, if you would have just beaten my ass in the first place, we wouldn't have to go through all of this that we, that we went through. This woman is literally telling me, that I should have physically hurt her from the first time. She acted up. Now, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. Right? Let me tell you something. In Jamaica, I've heard about women like this. I've heard about women that want men to beat them. And that if a man doesn't beat them, he doesn't love them. I've heard about women like this. I have literally heard about women like this i've heard brothers tell me about women like this that they're with a girl like this that if you don't smack them around they don't believe that you love them if you don't physically tear into them and beat them sometimes you don't love them and i feel like that's a mental problem i'm like yo which woman i was like i did not believe it i did not believe it right until even the next day this woman was like happy and chirping and, and was like, yo, flinging herself on me, throwing herself on me the next day. And I was flabberg, I, 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 I was in a state of shock. A state of shock. Because I don't know what the hell was going on. I was like, what the, and she was like cooking breakfast and she was happy singing. And she took days off from work because she had bruises and she said she didn't want them to see the bruises or anything like that and call police on me. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this girl? You understand? I was like, I've heard the stories, but I never believed it. You know? And um, I was like, I can't live my life like this because this is not the type of person I am. And I literally said after that to myself that, dude, you have to find a way out. And when you leave, you have to run very far from her. Because this is a mentally unstable person. Anyway, this is part three. This is the Hebrew Jamaican Coolie. I'm going to be back with part four. And part four or part five might be the conclusion to this series. Peace, shalom, enough love and respect. I'm out.